Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop in the Heavenly Backyard Garden. The subject for tonight fits the garden theme. It's a tulip, a nebula, called the Tulip Nebula. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. So the telescope I'm using is the Orion Eon 130mm triplet refractor. And it's been producing some fantastic images uh, since I bought this telescope about a year and a half ago. For this target, I'm pointing it high up in the northeastern sky after it gets totally dark. And then this object will be moving across the entire nighttime sky. So I should have a good six to eight hours worth of imaging time to work on this project. Now, I, I did shoot this the night before, and I ended up with over six hours of data in the narrow band uh, with the hydrogen alpha, sulfur two, and oxygen three. The camera that I used was the ZWO ASI 1600 mono, and I had it cooled to minus 10 degrees Celsius, which was a challenge because the temperature while I was doing this project was about 82 degrees Fahrenheit. What is that in Celsius? Something like, what, 28 uh, or so? Anyway, it was a warm, humid night. Anyway, I, I, and the sky was clear for change, and the moon was out of the picture. However, the moon is now beginning to move into the uh, scene, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to get anything tonight. Plus, the uh, sky is filling up with clouds. There are some passing thunderstorms nearby. Anyway, let's take a look at where this object is in Stellarium and take a peek at the images that I received during the night. So where is the Tulip Nebula? Well, first of all, here it is at 10 o'clock at night, about uh, an hour after total darkness. And uh, it's high up in the eastern sky. And there's the bright star Vega, part of the summer triangle. And um, there's Altair. And if you look at some of the features uh, in Stellarium with the uh, constellations and so forth, there you can see Cygnus the Swan. And um, it, it is part of a a lot of area of nebulosity. Let's, let's zoom in on this right now. And I'm going to have to rotate it to, to zoom in. But there you can see uh, the Tulip Nebula right there. I'm going to turn these markers off right now. And um, there you have the Tulip Nebula. Here you have the Seder region. Uh, further away off to the uh, this direction here, you have the, uh, the Veil uh, nebula complex, the uh, western and eastern veil nebula, and uh, right in this area here you have the North America nebula and the Pelican nebula. Uh, right also in this area here you have the Crescent nebula. A lot of people, including me, like taking pictures of uh, this exploded star, and you can see the outflow from the explosion associated with the uh, Crescent nebula. But uh, the interest uh, today is the Heavenly Backyard Garden, <laughs> the Tulip Nebula, and the Tulip Nebula is well, it's kind of like shaped like a tulip, but there it uh, is up in the uh, sky. And I did have a surprise uh, when I started to do, doing some research on this uh, nebula. And it happens to be with Cygnus X1, a black hole, which is nearby over in this region right over here. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So let's go into the uh, Pixin site and Photoshop and take a look at some of the uh, processed images, okay? Okay, let's take a look now at the uh, raw images. First of all, this is the uh, H-alpha uh, that I recorded. Uh, this is about two hours, it's two hours and six minutes, actually. It was seven minute subframes and um, came out to be two hours and six minutes worth of data right there. You can see a lot of nebulosity over here. Of course, you can see the Tulip Nebula right over here. And then this is the Oxygen-3. Uh, right here, uh, not much in that. You do have some uh, of the blue colors showing up in and around this area as well, uh, and, and some brighter areas in the core of the uh, Tulip Nebula. And this is the sulfur, uh, which is in the high uh, end of the red color. Um, uh, the sulfur, too, is uh, way up there in the reds, whereas in the um, uh, H alpha, that's in the uh, reds to orange, approaching the yellow color, but mostly in red orange uh, colors here associated with the hydrogen alpha uh, bandwidth. Anyway, uh, I can I blend these together, and uh, one of the things I can do, 
uh, is just go into color combination, do a quick one right here, and bring it up over here. And uh, this is typically the H, uh, the uh, SHO, the um, the Hubble palette right here, and uh, sulfur two for the red, hydrogen alpha for the green, and oxygen three for the blue. And if we tie them all together, bringing them in, you get this right over here. And it uh, doesn't look all that handsome right now. It's a lot of green in there, but uh, you can use an SCNR and pull out a lot of that green. I don't want to pull it all out. I'm going to pull a lot of it out though and just do it this way right here. And bingo, the green is gone. Mostly, I, I, I had just left a little bit, but now the stars are still all quite purple. Uh, there's a couple ways we can do uh, eliminate that uh, by doing this. Um, go into the script, utilities, where are you? Right over here, and go to color magenta stars, or correct magenta stars, the color. Uh, and um, just uh, take the defaults right real quick and just execute it and it does it what it does is actually inverting it and illuminating the green and uh there, there you go um you know before and after i think it's going to go to inverted here there, there's the before and there's the after so you know that that's a start right there for the sho anyway uh, let's eliminate that and look at the uh, first image uh, that I had in the uh, SHO. And, and this is what I came up with right over here. Uh, playing around a little bit, you can see a lot of nebulosity over here in this region here. Um, now this area here is gonna become important a little bit later on in this conversation. So hold a thought to that. Look at this cloud of nebulosity over here. Well, that's really nice too. And if I wanna look at just the um, nebulosity uh, with the star exterminator here um, actually I it was star net plus plus I used on this one here and uh, you can see the difference um, blending through here uh, let's uh, eliminate that and let's uh, let's look at the other famous uh, narrow band um, combination palette and that's the HOO and this is it right here isn't that nice um, and actually this shows more what it really looks like with a colored camera. Uh, it's mostly in the reds and it looks certainly like a red tulip over here. Once again, you can see this outflow over here. All right. And uh, again, this cloud over here. If I want to look at the, um, just the nebulosity alone, uh, there you have it. There's some star burning here. I would need to correct in Photoshop if I was to use this, but anyway, but there, that right there. Okay, uh, closing that off and closing that off. Now, I tried something new called the 4-ax combination, and this is the color I got with that. And, you know, you're gonna say, what is the 4-ax combination? It is weird, uh, but uh, the way I do this, I, I, I was doing some reading and some uh, uh, YouTube watching on this, and it's done through pixel math. Let me bring up pixel math. And here you do the combination. This is the uh, combination right here. And I got this down in my description in, down below uh, the, the formula for this. But uh, it's the, um, the oxygen three for the red channel, the oxygen three raised to the oxygen three uh, times sulfur two plus the uh, negative of this. That's the tilde. Uh, the tilde symbol, uh, O3 raised to the negative or the uh, opposite, that's the tilde once again, uh, O3 times HA. Okay, that's for the red channel. <laughs> for the green channel, it's, it's this combination over here. And uh, you just need to copy and paste this into the formula uh, from below. And blue is easy, O3, okay, <laughs> that was easy. But anyway, you use this combination and then you execute it. Uh, let's do a quick execution right now. Let's try it happen, see what happens in pixel math. And there it is right there. Basically the uh, same thing that I just had. And uh, I tweak this just a little bit, but uh, it gives you an interesting look uh, at, at the uh, different combinations of the colors. 
and you get to see a little bit of different, um, I guess, uh, structures uh, in the actual image that you took. So uh, yeah, there you have it right there. Now, yeah, that looks okay. Um, let's try something else. Let's take the H, I mean, the SHO, the uh, Hubble palette, and combine it with the uh, 4X palette and see what we get here. And I think this is it right here. That's the uh, nebulosity only. I want to show you this one right here. There. Now, that's, a, that's an interesting picture. Uh, it shows quite a bit. And it shows a, a lot of hot stars or hot area right in here with this blue color. And, uh, uh, and of course, then you have your other um, emission nebulae nebulosity over here and all around as well. So uh, yeah, this looks okay, but uh, I'm more interested in what's the, um, uh, the, HS, the SHO. I, I really like that one better, I think, uh, the Hubble palette. And uh, let's try it over here. There we go. Uh, I mean, I don't know which one you like better, this one. Let's bring them side by side. Maybe I can do it that way. Uh, I might have to bring them down a little bit. Let's see here bring it down just a little bit okay so there you got it um, hmm which one <laughs> uh, yeah they all look good really um, it's hard to pick hard to pick tell you what it's hard to pick let's uh, talk more about this Cygnus X1 uh, that is interesting so hold on so here we have the Hubble palette, the SHO, and um, there's the Tulip Nebula right there. I zoomed in somewhat on there. This is the area of question right in here, this bright star here. And it is, um, what is it, HD 226868. And uh, bringing in some of the, uh, the annotations that I put on this, uh, there you can see. Uh, right in here, there is a black hole and this star is orbiting the black hole every 5.8 days. I mean, it's, it's, it's moving quite fast. And the black hole, the, uh, the uh, um, forces around the black hole is producing this bow shock right over here uh, from the black hole itself. And there it is showing up on the imagery. This is a you know, total of six hours of imagery. And um, maybe I, I, I could get some more. Maybe it'll show up even more. I don't know if it would with my little telescope the uh, 130 millimeter anyway let's zoom in on this and it's interesting um in in this image here uh, i'm picking up this additional star i don't know if that's outflow coming from that star uh being sucked into the black hole which perhaps i'm thinking is in this area over here um you can also see what looks like material being pulled away from this and I think if we look at this in the I, I think it's in the um, uh, HOO let's see if I can find that one over here a little bit different than HO there there's the star right there and notice these stars I mean I'm <laughs> really zoomed in obviously uh, but notice the stars are, are relatively round um, but this one is more oblong. And according to the um, uh, reports that I've been reading, uh, I'm, I'm showing this animation right now in the background, uh, a lot of the material from this star is being pulled away into the black hole. And um, that's why I think the black hole X1 is right in this vicinity here and the, uh, the this star and the black hole are orbiting its common center of gravity which is probably right around in here somewhere but anyway it looks like this star is, is indeed being pulled away into the black hole interesting isn't that interesting uh, just from uh, trying to get the tulip nebula getting into some real astrophysics to me, it's rather fascinating. There's that bow shock right there. Shows up nicely in the HOO imagery uh, with this right here. So, interesting things up in the heavens. I also have an, a Celestron HD 11 inch telescope, and I'm going to try to use that to see if I can shoot a little bit closer on that star of interest, the uh, Cygnus X1 region. Uh, what is it? HD 226868. 
uh, that star. I, I wonder what it's going to look like in the Edge HD. That's perhaps coming up in the next video or, or perhaps a short to follow up as soon as the sky clears off. Anyway, you know, I got this telescope elevated way up so I can see over the roof and get into the northern sky as well. However, most of my targets in the northern sky are looking over the city of Savannah and there's a lot of light pollution in that direction. I've been trying to get the Heart Nebula for a couple of years now and still haven't gotten anything on that. Yeah, that's a different story altogether. Anyway, if you like this kind of video, I, I do a lot of astrophotography right here in my own backyard in a Bortle area of about uh, 4.5. Uh, I can see the Milky Way at night under a clear sky because as I look to the east and to the south, uh, besides seeing the trees, there's nothing but marshes and the ocean. So I have uh, pretty good uh, dark skies in those directions. I'd like to thank all my friends who helped supporting my channel. There they are right there up on the screen. And if you'd like to join the channel, you know, feel free to do so. I, I don't mind if you don't. You know, that's okay. Uh, but it, I'll just let you know it's available if, if, if you would like. Anyway, also, you know, that YouTube algorithm, uh, for some reason, it likes likes. So if you like this video, hit the like sign, will you? Or the like button. What do you, what do you call that thing? Hit, hit the like thing. Anyway, uh, I, I, I just love getting out here and looking at the stars. And uh, yeah, it's, it's amazing to me. And ever since I was seven years old, I've been amazed at up in the sky, uh, what's going on up there. And seven years, gosh, that's ancient history. I was 1957 when I was seven. Okay, anyway, yeah, uh, feel free to uh, join my page or to subscribe to my page that that'll be nice too uh, uh, anyway here we have the tulip nebula in the heavenly backyard garden from heavenly backyard astronomy and and that's just one of the images up in the sky the heavens are filled with these majestic wonders all around us and all in a sky near you so unless you need rain clear skies everyone <laughs>